another random AliExpress edition. Let's zoom down this. It's a drone charger. It could be used to charge many things. You basically buy the unit. It's got a USB input and it's got six independent charging circuits and the outputs you can generally choose what type of connectors you want and you buy the connectors usually separate to the actual unit, though there's some of them, some of the sellers do do bundles of them. I just chose uh, this one and then these random connectors that were on that listing, but really I just wanted them to cut them off and put my own preferred connector on for lithium cells. So let me show you some odd things about this. I shall plug on a lithium cell. So here is a random recycled street lithium cell. I'll plug it on and I'll bring in the charger, a generic charger, and I'll plug it into this and see if it shows its little weirdnesses. So it shows that that channel is charging, but watch what happens when I just touch the other one. See how the other LEDs are glowing just when I touch the side of the cable, not even touching the connectors. The capacitive coupling from uh, the output of this switchboard power supply to ground and, uh, and these cables is just enough to actually make it sort of register. That's weird. Not really come across anything like that before. I wonder why it's doing that. But we can find out. Anyway, this will charge the cell up to roughly 4.2 volts and then it will terminate and the LED should theoretically go out. Let's unplug it. I'll unplug that power supply as well. And we can open this. So let's pull these connectors out. I did order a pack of six of these connectors. They only sent five. Like they just picked up the wrong packet, but that's all right. It doesn't really matter. I'm not too bothered about it. The likelihood of me wanting to charge that many cells at once is limited. Let's hope this isn't one of these horrible ones with the uh, little pins that push in and uh, it's usually destructive opening it. It's not glued. Oh, it does have pins, but it's not too destructive to open. What's the bet? These are LTH7s. It's a very standard chip. Oh, that's very basic. Oh, it's a single-sided circuit board as well. Nice. So you've got the six connectors on this side. We've got the uh, six charge LEDs. And then it looks as though we've got six identical little charge circuits and the USB connector. Okay, dokie. Right, well, I shall take a picture of this so we can get a good close look and I'll reverse engineer it for our entertainment. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore the circuit. I shall zoom down this. To be honest, I should be zooming straight down onto one of the sections of circuitry. So let's do that. Let's zoom onto the top here. So we have the incoming supply on the USB connector. And really oddly, they've used it as a link from one side of the circuit board to the other. And it's not uncommon to do that because the shell is normally regarded as being a negative voltage. But they've used it as a positive link. So this whole shell is connect positive. And if you were to find one of those random leads that is grounded, it, well, it's got a screening on it and uh, the shell was connected to negative, then it would basically just short out as soon as you plugged it in. That's a bit strange. I wonder if that was deliberate or accidental. It is a single-sided board though. So we have the classic LTH7R uh, charge controller and it's got a little decoupling capacitor. It's got a resistor that sets the charge current and then normally it'd just be a 1k resistor and the LED that it's feeding. This 1K resistor is going to this LED here. That's the little connector going out. But in this instance, they've got another couple of resistors, the 100K and 10K. And the 100K is almost certainly the one that's causing that strange behavior when you touch it. But they're trying to use the chip in a way it wasn't really intended. So um, it's perhaps a, a workaround on that. Let's bring in the schematic and take a look at it. Here is the schematic. I'll zoom up just a little tiny bit closer. And make sure that's super well focused. Excellent. So here's the incoming USB supply. And this circuitry here is just multiplied by six. We have a decoupling capacitor in the vicinity of the charge controller, an LTH7R. There is the 3K3 resistor, um, 3.3 thousand ohms or 3,300 ohms. And that sets the current. Now, interestingly, on the data sheet, it says 3.3K, 300 milliamps. I measured the current at 340 milliamps. That could also have been the LED right enough, could be contributing to that, but it's close enough. Now, normally these chips are connected straight 
to a lithium cell. But in this case, you can actually basically just unplug the lithium cell and leave the output floating. And that's why, for stability, they have added a high-value resistor 100K across the chip so that when the battery is unplugged, this resistor pulls it weakly up to 5 volts and it takes it above the 4.2 volt threshold and theoretically the LED turns off, which most of the time it does. But because it's a very high value resistor, and it has to be a high value resistor, because if it was a low value resistor, it would just keep charging the lithium cell via that resistor from the 5 volt supply. With this high value, it's only going to be a matter of a, a number of microamps that are just trickling into the lithium cell. But obviously, you wouldn't want to leave it connected and go on holiday or anything like that, because it would gradually top up higher and higher. But this resistor here looks to be to pull that up and make it stable and stop the light flickering. But... There is an issue with that. Um, such a high value resistor and the USB power supplies, the ungrounded ones. Oh, hello, little piece of blue wire that has crept in. Um, these uh, chargers typically are not grounded. See the plastic earth pin or just there'll be two pins. So they have the output with a slight reference to the mains, just with capacitive coupling and deductive coupling to a degree. But mainly capacitive coupling, especially via the suppression capacitor, and that results in the output jiggling up and down at mains frequency to a high open circuit voltage. So when you touch that, it's capacitively coupling, and then it's fluctuating that voltage so it's not 5 volts, and that's what's making the LED start flickering and dimming up and down when you touch it. And this 10K resistor here, normally there'd be an LED and resistor um, and this output is just on or off, depending on the charge state. I wonder if this is an attempt to fix that, that they don't really know what's happening in there, because it's not really going to do anything. I can't see any point in this 10K resistor at all. But uh, that's it. It's fundamentally a very standard charge circuit. Uh, quite useful. You've got six of them in this unit, which if you want to charge lots of things at once, then that's actually quite convenient. A note that in the listing they say uh, six 500 milliamp out outputs and in reality that would be three amps and it's a bit heavy for a micro USB lead and the standard power supply is associated with that. In reality it's close to 300 milliamp so six times 300 milliamps 1.8 amps and that's well within the range of say a two amp supply which is what they're kind of really aiming at here. But it's a interesting unit. It's just handy for, say, for instance, you have a large number of small cells you want to charge and you can get the standard leads with this very uncrimpable connector. It's one of those connectors that is super flat and tiny crimps. So it wouldn't be much fun to actually terminate. It's easier just getting these connectors, cut the end off and stick your own connectors in the end if you've got a personal favourite connector. But for that, it's a, basically a universal little low-current six-way USB powered lithium cell charger and for that it works absolutely perfectly and it's quite a handy little device to have.